of high election drama in Europe as results of elections to the EU Parliament came in. A decided highlight has been with big gains for the far right virtually across the board, with some big shockers for many. At the top of the list, French President Emmanuel Macron dissolved his country's parliament and called snap elections. Marine Le Pen's far right national rally party trounced Macron's renaissance, winning more than 31% of the vote. Le Pen's party won more than double of what Macron could muster. Two phases of the French parliamentary elections will be held on the 30th of June and the 7th of July. It is a situation to which I cannot resign myself. The rise of nationalists and demagogues is a danger not only for our nation, but also for Europe and for France's place within it, along with the world. Schultz's Social Democrats were overtaken by the far right, AFD, winning a record 16.5% of the vote. The numbers underscore the opposition party's resilience ahead of federal elections next year. The AFD has tapped into frustrations with Schultz's government, the Ukraine war and state services burdened by rising migration and a cost of living crisis have hit hard. In Italy, Giorgia Meloni and her far-right Brothers of Italy party is forecast to more than double its seats in the European Parliament since the last election. And that will hand her new power to influence policy in the EU. The right wing also strengthened its majority in the European Parliament with victories in Austria, Greece, Poland and Spain. We'll take a look at the provisional results for the 23 countries. The centre-right European People's Party, the EPP, has won 191 seats, confirming its role as the largest bloc in the European Parliament. The Socialists and Democrats, S&D bloc, was always projected to come in second and they won 135 seats. As it stands, the current coalition between the EPP, S&D and Renew would reach a majority. EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen needs a qualified majority of the 27 European Union leaders and also a majority in the 720-seat European Parliament to secure another five-year term. She expressed confidence that she could win a new mandate. The centre is holding. But it is also true that the extremes on the left and on the right have gained support. And this is why the result comes with great responsibility for the parties in the centre. We may differ on individual points but we all have an interest in stability and we all want a strong and effective Europe. So throughout my campaign, I've been working hard to build a broad and effective majority of pro-European forces. To a large degree, the EU election results are a litmus test, an indication of how the bloc will handle critical issues, including the war in Ukraine, Several right-wing parties in Europe have sided with Russia. Migration and the EU's ambitious climate goals are some of the other issues. Concerns around European industry and competing against China have also been in focus. Well, for more on this, we're joined by our correspondent, Giles Gibson, joining us live from Rome this morning. Giles, many thanks for your time. Some quite surprising results in those elections. Give us your overall assessment and potentially what happens from here. Well, look, in terms of the results here in Italy, the results really went as the polls had been suggesting they would for many weeks with Giorgia Maloney, the Italian Prime Minister, and her brothers of Italy, the Fratelli d'Italia, having a very strong showing, around about 28% of the votes, really significantly boosting their vote share compared to the last European elections. Uh, we saw the opposition Democratic Party getting about 25% of the vote, so uh, their leader, Elie Schlein, will be pretty satisfied, I think, with that result. Still trailing Giorgia Maloney, though. 
I think also we need to look very closely at the result for the League Party, which of course is led uh, by the right-wing firebrand Matteo Salvini. He's also a Deputy Prime Minister here in Italy and part of the governing coalition. They are at the moment, we're still in preliminary results. We haven't got the final results yet but it looks like they're going to get under 9% of the vote, which is a really significant drop compared to the last European elections. That will certainly put pressure on Matteo Salvini within his own party about why they had such a poor performance in these elections. But I think overall you see Giorgia Maloney really bucking the trend that we've seen around Europe of incumbents not doing very well, not getting much support in these elections. Just look at France, for example, uh, in terms of that. Georgia Maloney really coming out of these European elections in a much stronger position than some of her other fellow prime ministers and presidents around the continent. Well, Charles, you mentioned France there. That was obviously one of the key focuses of the results. Give us your assessment on the wider story in France and elsewhere in Europe. I think what we saw was Emmanuel Macron, the French president, really trying to take charge of that moment right after seeing his party completely devastated, really, in these results compared to uh, the national rally, which got around about 30 or even more 30 than 30 percent of the vote in France. Emmanuel Macron taking that decision to call those snap parliamentary elections coming up in, in just a few weeks time, of course, just a few weeks before Paris is also due to hold the uh, 2024 Olympics as well. There is absolutely no doubt that this is a bit of a gamble for Emmanuel Macron because, yes, on the one hand, I think he'll be considering that people do vote a bit differently in European elections compared to national elections. So the trend that we generally see is that people kind of vote more for some of the fringe parties in European elections. They see it as a way that they can protest vote uh, in some senses and then in national elections they tend to move back towards some of the more kind of traditional power centers so that is the gamble that i think emmanuel macron is taking on the one hand on the other hand of course you could see the uh, rassemblement national the national front uh, the national rally rather uh, moving forward and taking a similar vote share in those national elections and then you could see a scenario where emmanuel macron for the rest of his term has to be working with a far-right prime minister, which would be a historic first for France. OK, Giles, many thanks. Giles Gibson joining us there live from Rome.